A rotating fan blade. A fan blade rotates with angular velocity given by omega z of t is equal to gamma minus beta t squared, where gamma is 5 radians per second and beta is 0 0.8 radians per second cube. Part A. Calculate the angular acceleration as a function of time. Part B. Calculate the instantaneous angular acceleration alpha z at t is equal to 3 seconds and the average angular acceleration alpha average z for the time interval t equals 0 to t equals 3 seconds. How do these two quantities compare? If they are different, why? So let's start with part A. So in rotational kinematics, we have equations that are uh, completely analogous to translational kinematics. Uh, when we calculate the angular acceleration, it is the rate of change of angular speed, d omega z dt. So we look at omega as a function of time, it is my gamma minus beta t squared. Gamma is a constant, so minus beta t squared derivative with respect to time gives us minus 2 beta t. Beta is given as 0 0.800 radians per second cube, and therefore alpha z of t would be uh, 2 times 0 0.8 minus 1.60 t radians per second square if t is in seconds. So this is our angular acceleration as a function of time. Part B, <coughs> now we're going to find the instantaneous acceleration at time t is equal to 3 seconds. So we need to evaluate the answer we have found in part A at t is equal to 3.00 seconds. So when I substitute t is equal to 3, minus 1.6 times 3 gives us minus 4.80 radians per second square. All right. And... So we have found the instantaneous acceleration at t equals 3 seconds. Now we need to know the average acceleration between t equals 0 and t equals 3 seconds. So if I look at the value of the angular speed, omega z, at t is equal to 0 seconds, it would be equal to, because it's gamma minus beta t squared, it would be equal to gamma. And what is gamma? It is 5.00 radians per second. Now, if I calculate the angular speed at t is equal to 3 seconds, that would be gamma minus beta t squared. t squared would be 9. So this would be 5 minus... Uh, Beta was 0 0.8, 5 minus 0 0.8 times 9, and that gives us minus 2.20 radians per second. So the average angular acceleration, alpha z average, uh, can be found by taking the difference omega z at t is equal to 3 seconds minus omega z t 
t is equal to 0 seconds divided by delta t, 3.00. So this is basically delta omega divided by delta t. So omega z at t is equal to 3 seconds is minus 2.20. Omega z at t is equal to 0 seconds is 5, 5.00. This is going to be divided by 3. So that is minus 7.20 divided by uh, 3. So this gives us minus 2.40 radians per second square angular, average angular acceleration okay so <clears throat> now we want to interpret this result how do these two quantities compare and if they are different why now I see that the angular acceleration at t is equal to three seconds we have found to be minus 4.8 radians per second square is twice that of the angular acceleration at t is equal to 0 seconds. So if I look at the, the change in angular acceleration with time, it is uh, the function is minus 1.6t, so it's a linear function. Therefore, I see that uh, since the angular acceleration alpha z increases linearly with time we have the functional relationship to be minus 1.60 t if you calculate the average value of the angular acceleration, it should be equal to the value at t is equal to 0 plus the value at t is equal to uh, 3 seconds divided by 2. So this should be equal to the algebraic average of the two uh, angular accelerations. At t is equal to 0, we have 0. At t is equal to 3, we have minus 4.8 radians per second square. This is going to be divided by 2 and this is indeed minus 2.40 radians per second square. Uh, therefore, the algebraic average is what we need. So when we have a linear relationship between time and uh, angular acceleration, the average value of the angular acceleration can be found by taking the algebraic average. Okay, so to summarize, we have a rotating fan blade whose angular velocity as a function of time is given as gamma minus beta t squared, where gamma and beta are two constants. To calculate angular acceleration as a function of time, uh, just as we do in translational kinematics, to find acceleration as a function of time, we would take the derivative of its uh, velocity as a function of time. Here we have angular speed as a function of time. So d omega dt uh, gives us the angular acceleration. Now we can find the instantaneous angular acceleration by evaluating this function at a certain point in time. At t is equal to 3 seconds is specifically what we are after here. And uh, if we compare uh, omega z at t equals 0 and omega z at t equals 3 seconds, uh, we can find the average uh, angular acceleration by delta omega over delta t. That gives us minus 2.40 radians per second squared, which is half of what we found at t is equal to 3 seconds. And we have decided that that makes sense because alpha z increases linearly with time, so the average value should be the algebraic average of the angular acceleration at t equals 3 seconds and t equals 0 seconds. So uh, alpha z at t equals 0 plus 
alpha z at equals 3 divided by 2 should give us the angular acceleration average value.